Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk. Yeah, we got some great guests with us. We usually don't have guests for tech talk, but we've got Robert Marshall and Andrew Peters and Robbo Robertson uh, joining us from the Pro Audio Suite. And if you've got a question about your home voiceover studio, boy, now's the time. Now is the time <laughs> because these guys will go right over your head with probably more stuff. <laughs> Over, and under, and right know. through the middle. <laughs> Absolutely. So get those questions into the chat room right now, and uh, let's get rolling. It's time for Tech Talk on Voice Over Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom. The engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. Everybody. BS. <laughs> Tech talk. Talk. <laughs> tech talk, tech talk, tech talk, tech. Uh, we're here. I like your intro. Yeah. Can I just say it's, it's very effective? Oh, thank Thanks, you. Man. Yeah, That's man. all Dan right there. Yeah, yeah. it's you know the, it's reverb, like... the reverb, especially is just just makes it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh gosh, thank you. <laughs> Coming from a producer, that makes me feel. Was that a PCM sixty or a, or a <laughs> Bercasti? Uh, gosh, which it was probably oh, my four sixteen anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if yeah. if you've got a question uh, for the a wonderful audio folk that we have with us this week from the Pro Audio Suite, uh, George's <laughs> other podcast, uh, which is a little looser than it's like an do. awkward Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. Where the other family should. Yeah, but who's the turkey? Yeah, that's right. the question. <laughs> 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 well, I'm supposed to hit the uh, the, uh, the rim shot button. Anyway, uh, I, if you've got I, a I don't have the roadcaster on. I'm not on the roadcaster. Oh, no, 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 no. oh, oh, well, wait a second. Let me let me let me find it. Where is the uh, where's the rim shot? The rim shot is there. It is. Yay! Oh, no. All right. <laughs> Nothing like a late sound effect. The joys of live moving. radio. You'll I know. Live yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that, that's what we love about this show is that we we do it live, uh, although words and all. Yes, yeah. and well, it's uh, also exactly the reason we don't do ours live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, but it's more fun this way. You know, True, you never know what's going to happen. Indeed. It's like a box of yeah. chocolates. You you never know what you're going to get. Yeah, but that, that's just such a weird saying because if you buy a box of chocolates, it says what it is on the outside. Otherwise, you wouldn't buy it. Oh, <laughs> so I never got that. Life's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Well, read the freaking label. Then you know what you're going to get. <laughs> so they, no, then I look at it. They don't always like... have a decoder thing that says which one is in what area. And plus, if someone eats enough of them out of the box, then they start getting shuffled around and you exactly. have no idea which one is which. Exactly. So then you have to go by the look of them. But by the time you start trying to analyze it, the person holding the box offering you a chocolate is like, get on with it. And then you grab a random <laughs> chocolate and you don't know what you're going to get. And there you go. And it's the orange <laughs> flavor. It's always okay. the orange flavor. It's always flavor. the weird. Yeah. Yeah. The what weird is that? Orange orange I always get the nougat and i hate nougat but anyway oh, yeah. <laughs> well cc you know nougat we say nougat 
Yeah, really? Oh, really? Does that mean we're a bit French or something? Okay. <laughs> so. Now the other it's great a thing weird about word, anyways, like yeah, that and yeah. banana. Like, yeah. We we are all over the place tonight. I mean, aside from being all over the place, but <laughs> all over the world. Yes, yeah, Robert is in Chicago, and mm-hmm. Andrew, you are in. Well, I'm actually in. A, I'm out of Melbourne. I'm down the coast of Melbourne. And if anyone's watching Netflix currently, and there's a TV show or series called uh, Surviving Summer. Oh, I thought you were going to say think. Byron Bay's. But no, Surviving <laughs> Summer. <laughs> Byron Bay's. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Uh, Surviving Summer, if you want to check it out and see where I live, that's where it was all shot. But all it's right. actually kind of weird because you're they're there. on our beach and then there's, they're out surfing on another beach and they're pretending it's the same place and everyone locally is oh. going. Oh, oh. It's doing oh, right. That's a Hollywood anyway. trick. Right. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. And Robbo, you're in Sydney. I am. Sid Vegas. That's right. Or as we like to call it, underwater world. <laughs> underwater world. <laughs> underwater. Yeah. Sydney We're Barrett. Floods. Yeah. Yeah, Sydney Barrett. Anyway, uh, one of the things that I think people need to understand, if you haven't figured it out already when we do voiceover body shop, is telling you about what George and I do, which is help you create and maintain your home voiceover studios. And it's, it's time th- for a plug. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Boom tish. Yes, I mean, it's it's very, very specific to you and to your particular environment. And that's what we do is we will come in and we'll say, where's the best place to record? Oh, you have a booth? Okay. How do you use it? And Which that's what we mic? do. Do you talk into it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully but, the right side. Uh, amazingly, it, some people don't Hold this that. up to a lot of people and ask them which <laughs> way you should talk into this yeah. mic. And I guarantee <laughs> they, most of them will get job. it wrong. Yes. Even even if you put a sign directly on the wall next to the microphone that says to speak into the side of it, um, which side? especially if <laughs> if if you're the type that might edit video, you will probably going to take the same microphone and point it straight at you and start talking to the front of it right. and ignoring the sign that's there to. Uh, yes, indeed. And, and wonder well, why, why it is you sound like this. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's time for uh, George's tech update in a minute. But first, we got to tell you that if you want to work with one of us, whether it's me or George. You can do that. We are professionals. We will consult with you. We can come into your home if you happen to be in the greater Los Angeles area. Most occasionally, we travel. Occasionally, yeah, we, we do travel. travel. And no restraining but, order. No, not yet. <laughs> not I've not gotten away. Well, that, that's uh, <laughs> and, but we don't like sneak in the back window. We just like, we <laughs> actually enough. ring the bell and, and knock on the door. But um, if you want to work with one of us, because we have lots of interesting services to make sure that you sound your best. If you want to work with George, where do you go? Well, you head over to George, the dot tech, of course. Well, uh, my name is my address. Uh, there's a lot going on over there. The site is, uh, will be, be the current site that you see will be sunsetted soon. And is that enough S alliteration for you? Um, it will be going away. So if you like my old school website, you better go look at it now because in about a month or so, it's going to be gone. Um, but that's where you can find all my services over there. Sound checks, um, stacks, studio design, and audiobook mastering, processing stacks, all that kind of stuff happens over there. George, the dot tech and Dan, you have your own home on the web with a freshly painted website. And that's at homevoiceoverstudio.com indeed yes it is brand spanking new the specimen collection cup is now at the top of the page not at the bottom so when you come to my page you'll go oh that's where i submit my audio so dan can analyze it and for 25 audio folks only audio yeah. only yes. specimen yes. <laughs> i was gonna say yeah yeah, yeah. It, yeah is it kind of like when john really... oliver asked people to send in their tidings or something for <laughs> <laughs> i don't know where i keep my tidings but anyway <laughs> uh if you go over there for 25 dollars, i will analyze your existing audio and either tell you it's it needs a little bit of work or it's fabulous and you don't need my help but generally there's always something i can come up with and you know so go on over to Home Voiceover Studio and check that out. And now it's time for George's weekly tech update. Take it yes. away, George the Tech. I will not stretch this one out because we've got so much talent here today and I don't want to yeah. waste everybody's precious time. But I did get something sent to me recently. Um, our friends over at Mojave Audio, and I say friends because I've known uh, Dusty Wakeman over there for a long time. They were a very early supporter of the SAG after a um, Don LaFontaine voiceover lab. 
And so we've known him a long time, and they do make some great mics. And he said, George, I don't know why you don't have one of our mics, so here you go. And here it is. So this is the um, MA50. This, wow. is their, this is their entry point microphone. Okay, you know, they're most accessibly priced. I believe it's 500 US. So certainly not a cheap microphone, but if you know anything about Mojave, the founder, the, the, the guy that actually invents the microphones, um, he's uh, David Royer. You may have heard of Royer, Royer, Royer microphone. microphone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He is a, um, a genius. Uh, and he is very, very particular about what they sell, even if it's very affordable. And so even at the price point of the MA50, it's still a very, very high quality uh, microphone. And this is probably where a lot of folks are going to start their voiceover journey in their lineup. Now they have the MA301 FET. That's if you want to go with a multi-pattern microphone um, and you want more options. But the MA50 is a nice, straightforward, single pattern, no frills, no switches, no bells and whistles, just a really clean, pure microphone. And that's something that I will hopefully be using and reviewing shortly. But this is literally, I literally opened the box right before we started taping tonight. I um, watched him actually open it. it yeah, was, and then this is really wow. exciting. The shotgun, the shock mount, you know, pretty standard fare right there. It's an elastic shock mount. And that's it. In a nice box. A nice road case. There you go. Nice microphone. Thanks, Dusty. We'll give it its due and we'll start using it for real shortly, I promise. I, wanna, I think I used a Mojave years ago. The first time I stumbled across was a studio in uh, a guy called Tristan Meredith, if you're mm -hmm. watching Tristan. Um, he had a Mojave and it was a, a tube Mojave. From yeah, I was going to say, they're more. I, I, I know yeah, more yeah. for tube mics and, and, yep. and they were quite the rage. They were. Especially when they first came out. You know, the like, MA200, the MA300. Yeah. Because I, I, I think wasn't who was doing a lot of the mic mods before that and like Mike Jolly? Yeah, that's right. Mike Jolly? Mike yeah, Jolly, yeah. Jolly Mike Mods, right. It was, it was what's, right, the it was right on with, that. what's the connection with him and Mojave? They, I, I think they came on the scene like right at the same time. Like Mojave was like one of the early independent mic make mic mic makers, like you know, like Peluso was early on in there. Yeah. Like before that it was always AKG and, and Neumann. The big usual and, suspects. And and there weren't yeah. any boutique mic preamp mic companies. And then Mojave Peluso shows up. There's one in Australia we won't talk about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, Seinfeld. Right. So so they I, I put them in that category. And then along that same time was because a lot of what these um you know, like these guys were, were, were building off of was the ability to be able to buy parts to to get reasonably high quality capsules or they were able to get the machinery to make their own capsules mm -hmm. and it was like the next level in you know, mm -hmm. like boutique like Yeah, I mean I, yeah. I've met David, I know that for a fact that he does personally listen to every single mic that leaves the their plant. There and it's up right here in Burbank in California. Mm -hmm. And it, it, yeah, he's, he's, con, he's a control freak. He yeah. is. And so, you know, that's why they're not going to make a $300, $200, $100 mic. It's just not possible. They're not wanting to play at that, at that level. This is a, an affordable entry point, but still a very high quality, well made yeah. and checked yeah. out mic. Yeah. So that's yeah. the Mojave. We'll, we'll do some more testing of it. Yeah. Um, I think topic, that you and I yeah. need to go over there, George, and do a remote session over there. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I know they yeah. would love to do it. Absolutely. That would be a blast. Well, make yeah. a call. Let's make it yeah. happen. Um, another more mundane topic, but anyway, because I had a couple of these sitting, sitting around, I recently had to set up a studio where we put a webcam in the booth, and the booth is, you know, by the routing of the wiring, probably 20 feet from the computer. And one of the features we needed to have was a webcam, because we, what's happening is the, the actors in the booth, the producer, and the and the whoever else the talent not the talent sorry the client i guess um Engineer, is sitting yeah. in another room right yeah. so we don't have a window we don't have a way to see them so we're using a webcam getting that webcam signal from the booth all the way over to the mac was a little bit of a the, challenge this is in a studio where they don't have a direct window so they're using a in like a, a cctv i've been at a few studios that, that, that and do the it reason that for this is the wall it's between the booth and the other room is a sheer wall in a condo we couldn't we couldn't move it. We couldn't modify it. We couldn't mess with the shear wall. It's it's structural, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we went like Florida. 
Yeah. So we ended up with a webcam and it works fine except for the distance, right? I bought a USB 3.0 extension cable on Amazon. We plugged it in and the camera frame rate was like yeah. that. It was really, really yeah. bad. Wow. And it said USB 3.0 extension, right? Yeah. The thing was, it wasn't active extender. There's differences between these extensions. Uh, mm -hmm. You, if you're running webcams, webcams are, are particularly picky about the speed of the connection and everything. You want to make sure it's an active USB extender. This one happens to be telltale sign usually is that they have a pretty big chunky connector on one end because there's act, actually circuitry in here. So that's getting electricity from the USB port on the computer that's running through the cable and then and actually providing power to this end where the camera plugs in. This uh, actually, we got another one in there that uses Ethernet. I, it's so funny. I happened to have it from another job. Yeah. It was in a bin and I wasn't sure, not trash, a container. Uh, it was in a <laughs> container in my car <laughs> that, uh, that had extra cables and sure enough, there it was. And the one that I found actually extends the connection over cat Eth five yeah. yep. and it actually worked perfectly i was shocked yeah. how well it worked so anyway i had already bought another one because i wasn't sure if the one i had would work and that one looks something like this now this Ooh. this is sort of the next level of extender that's, that's a nice one yeah. yeah yeah what's cool about this one is um you can run very long distances over cat six and it's also a usb hub so you're getting the, um, you can't see it because of the pictures not showing the USB ports. But on the other oh, side of this nice box one. are four USB 2.0 ports. So now you can put this in your booth, plug in multiple devices, a keyboard, a mouse, maybe an eye lock. You can have everything that you want to have in your booth with you uh, plugged into this. And then it extends over a normal Cat 6. I think it's Cat 5, actually. Um, Ethernet cable, which are extremely cheap. And they can run a long, long distance. So this is the kind of thing you want to look at. Is it says 60m? This one is spec to run up to 60 meters. So and what's something like wow. that worth, George? Uh 60, 60 US. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Amazon yeah. Prime. I'm, I mean, it perfect. came like in two days. So. I, I've yeah. dealt with this stuff a ton. I mean, because extending USB is the same nightmare as extending HDMI. Um, right. it is. And so you need, it's funny because you said that that one's active, but a lot of the active USB extenders I've seen, they actually have a wall wart on the um, receiving side. Yes. I meant to say that the, the one that I ended up using in, in the studio, it has uh, two little tails, right? One has USB male, the other one female, and then there's an ethernet port on the other side that connects. But the one end, they Power. actually, the receiving end, the one that's in the, in the booth uh, where the camera plugs in has a power supply. Exactly. It plugs in. Whereas this one doesn't, this one relies on the fact that you're plugging it into a USB three port. You see it's that's, blue. That's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like that, th this one says it's active, but there's it's, no extra power than the source of the original USB. So it's not, that's right. it's not in any way repeating or it, is that really active or is that, is that, active is that an because amplifier? Is it more well, an amplifier than Anything? It's it's active because it's using that 900 milliamp USB three power power, sub okay. power to power this electronics that are in this cable, so okay. that's what makes. It, but you you if you don't plug this into a USB three connector, you will not get that power, and it probably won't work. So that's why I thought I would show these off because they're they're not all the same, and you have to be. So I would recommend buying two completely different ones if you're like concerned about something working. They're cheap enough. You can get return and get more than one and test them both because you might one way may, may work and the other one may not. I've I've found that the Ethernet ones for me didn't work as well, you know, in in, in the studio. But but and the ones I had know. were not powered. They were just like Ethernet on either end, and that was uh, it. Yeah. No, I think powered is the key word. Yeah. That they have a power supply that provides an, some sort of a booster or amplifier that provides that strong signal. And, and again, that, that seemed to be what worked. And the cable I had, the Ethernet cable I happened to have was one of those flat, very low yeah. profile cables, and it was 50 feet long. It was much longer than needed, right? Didn't matter. Yeah. It still worked flawlessly. So Great. there you go. Um, yeah. Moving on to uh, software. I've started playing around with this thing called SoundDesk. And SoundDesk is, allows you to emulate pretty closely the 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 fun that you can have with um with an apollo where you get to plug in processing into a signal and record directly through it 
I, I was thinking it more as like a DAW without the tracks. It is. So, so this is a way to mix multiple inputs, send them to multiple places, and have them be monitored or recorded into software. It's wow. a $30 application. Is it simple? No, it is not. <laughs> it's well, not that neither simple. Neither is an Apollo twin. So. Neither is an Apollo <laughs> yeah, exactly. twin. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's, it's definitely something to wrap your head around. If you're familiar with something called Loopback and a few other tools, it's kind of similar in some ways to what that does, but this emulates more of an actual mixer. Um, but what it lets you do is you can have multiple channels of audio come in and have it go back out the other side. But what's, what's most interesting about it is their sound driver, it has a mode called all-in-one. And what all-in-one mode does is it takes literally every single audio channel available in your system from every device and bakes them all into one super big audio device and now it lets you send things in ways in and out of things in a way that were really difficult to do and it's, it's really it's basically an clever. aggregate device in a sense isn't it yeah it's creating its own aggregated yeah. audio device where you're where you're bundling together multiple things what have i done with it so far you're probably wondering the what only have thing you done i've with done with it so far george <laughs> the only thing <laughs> i have done is i used it to a clubhouse i wore my headset microphone that has a little boom mic on it. It's not an expensive mic by any means. And I threw it in my, I take it on my, I'll take it on the road, right? And I'm sitting in the airport terminal <laughs> to fly back from Philadelphia to LA on, on Thursday, or no, Friday. And I want to do my clubhouse that I do, this one that I do every, every twice a week for, for the George the Tech customers and not have it sound like total garbage and have it be really noisy. So I ran my, in my mic through a series of plugins. I was using um, Bertom Denoiser, and I was using a Sheps Omnichannel Wavis plugin because I had just gotten it, and I was able to throw all this stuff in. And because of the really low latency that a, a modern computer, I'm using a MacBook Air M1, I was able to monitor all that processing. So I was actually hearing what everybody else was hearing with an extremely small amount of delay. It was enough to detect it. It wasn't perfectly zero it wasn't zero it was probably 20 to 30 milliseconds but it was short enough that i could monitor what i was sending out and so i was getting the effect in essence that you're getting from a 600 dollars plus apollo for a 30 dollar plugin or or application so it proved to work it was pretty impressive i wouldn't i still wouldn't recommend it to everybody especially if you're not needing to do anything live it's really not necessary but for those who have unique use cases that want to have more control over your audio signal before it's recorded, this is an option for doing that. Yeah. So, that's so George, what's it, what's it giving me that Nexus isn't giving me then? Source Nexus. So, yeah, good well, point. I, I so, so I source can see you can put pan. Nexus in this and really yeah. get confusing. Yeah, okay. You can start. <laughs> yeah. yes. I'm confused already. So, <laughs> so later in this episode, I'm going to give Robert the opportunity to do his own commercial for Nexus. <laughs> just because he's here and he can explain well, it better than anyone else everybody should but, have nexus. Um, yeah <laughs> nexus is a way to to send audio from one thing to another thing inside your computer and robert can expand on this this it kind of it's kind of like that but it also has this mixing capability sure. um it's a it's more it's a more complex tool i would, I would say that nexus uses the daw for that mixing capability right yeah. nexus yeah, is could, a companion for your daw pro tools right or yeah. whatever see, I can see. this is meant to be an, uh, an, another tool altogether yeah yeah once again you're see. you're you, go ahead i was just going to say i can see pro tools doing using nexus what that's doing i guess is that yeah. sort of pretty well, much pro tools up, George? Is, would that be close yeah you're like you yeah, nexus totally. and pro tools together you could do what you're getting from that yeah absolutely yeah. Like, yes, that you, you take pro tools and nexus and you have basically sound if desk. you have pro tools you yeah. do not need sound desk likely yeah. because you have all the capabilities you have you need it's just that Soundex, I like. I, th I think it's clever that it has the all-in-one audio driver, which sure. aggregates everything together for you. So that's how, how is that? How is that not like just going to the Mac and slamming together an aggregate device? It's essentially, I think, the same. It's just that it just does it with a click. I see. It just does it. So, yeah. um, and it has a it has a routing matrix. If you really want to get in the, the weeds, uh, it has a routing matrix, and yeah. it shows every software running on the computer that has audio and lets you assign them to different. Right, points right, right. in the matrix so it's it can get pretty 
pretty interesting that's fancy yeah. wow. dan do you have a thing to, to tag on to this conversation I, today? Well, what i was going to tag on was that if you've got a question out there anybody <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> throw it in the chat room uh whether you're on facebook live or whether you are watching on youtube and uh or on a ham radio which apparently is still fairly popular <laughs> Um, <laughs> Only with eggs. <laughs> <laughs> you might use one of those mics behind you on a ham radio. That's, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, throw them in the chat room, and then Jeff Holman is back there somewhere. Jeff, are you back? Yeah, yeah. somewhere around here, and he will relay those questions to us. And our great guest, Andrew Peters, Robert Marshall, and Robbo Robertson, uh, joining us from the Pro Audio Suite. These guys know their stuff. So throw those questions in there. That's scary. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, well, we're going we're gonna to let the, the, the Pro Audio Suite guys uh, get into uh, what they want to talk about a little bit and your questions right after these important messages. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Inflated prices? Not at voiceoveressentials.com. Despite the nationwide inflation rate of over 8%, VoiceOver Essentials refuses to raise prices. In fact, they refuse to even say the I-word. Their inventory is large on all their products, and they purchase them before the current economic conditions. It's simply wrong to increase profit, as many retailers are doing right now. So Harlan and company promise not to raise their prices during difficult times for everyone. They'll stay the course, steady and sure. Flat and firm, solid and steadfast. Okay, enough. You get the point. Unfortunately, they're under the same inflationary pressures as everyone else, and they'll need to restock in the not-so-distant future. No doubt, they'll be sticker shock for them and you. So, right now is the time to order that Portabooth Pro or VO1A voiceover microphone and their VO2.0 headphones. Fight inflation at voiceoveressentials.com. Hey, it's the time of the show where I stop chatting in the chat room and do a commercial. And we're going to do, a little, do something a little differently tonight because we have a special guest. And that is Robert Marshall, the man from Source Elements. And I, I wanted to have him on to talk briefly. We'll try to keep it short. It's just a commercial, not an infomercial, about a different product that we don't talk about much. And that's Nexus. Robert, would you come on and talk to us about Nexus? We would sure appreciate it. On the spot. Wow. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, the, hey, I do this every I know. week for you guys. I improvise a spot. So so Nexus, something that might be new to a lot of our viewers that hear me talk about Source Connect most of the time. Tell us a couple of unique things that make it a, a useful tool for anybody recording in their uh, home studio. And I would say mainly, would you say it's something that's suited for the producer side of it's, things? It's, it's a lot suited for the producer. I would say the, the quickest thing is for the uh, audio engineers and producers, what it lets them do is stay in their audio workstation, typically Pro Tools, but could be Logic or whatever. And it lets them very easily interface that workstation with a whole bunch of outside um other applications and communication systems that might not present themselves as um, as plugins or might not even be able to address multi-channel audio. So Nexus lets any application, any web browser, uh, music player, QuickTime player, etc. Communication you can is like a, a, a Zoom type and thing. Skypes and Source All Connects. So you, like basically Source Connect has a plugin built into it but that plugin only does its thing for Source Connect, trades audio the to link. and from Source Connect, the Link right. plugin. So think of Nexus as like the bigger version of Link that now does that same trick for every application and service right. inside your computer. And so now the audio engineer can have a voice talent coming in, send audio to remote clients, feed the mm -hmm. audio from the remote clients back to the talent, bring in a website that everyone's like, well, it was like this on that YouTube video. Okay, here, I'll play the YouTube video for you too. You can do all that inside your workstation, which you're very familiar with. Um, yeah. And, and if then, you end up on a session on Source Connect and they don't know how to use this on the other end, oh, good luck. Because this is by far the best way to do it. And, uh, you know, I recommend, it, it's been a couple of years now with the pandemic. This tool and others like, you know, that allow remote collaboration are highly and well established now into what they're doing. You know, chances are if there's a Zoom happening during a Source Connect, they're going to be Nexus. using this. It's yeah. got to be Nexus. 
But make sure that whoever you're working with knows how to use this because it is a very powerful way to do it. And before we go, Robert, there's uh, three different well, levels I'll, of it, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. So like, well, there used to be three different levels. Now there's just Nexus because okay. we, we got with too many products and people are like, I don't understand what do I need? And so we just simplified yeah. everything. And so now okay. there's just Nexus. Um, right. There there used to be a free, a basic and Nexus mm -hmm. Pro. Now there's just Nexus. Mm -hmm. And I, I think maybe one of the obvious questions is like, why would I need this as a voice talent? And I would say probably the best reason that a voice talent needs would, would maybe want Nexus is they're in a session and the clients aren't hiring an engineer. They just want to zoom in and have you record everything but they're being a little bit presumptuous and they want you to record separate takes and manage the takes and they want you to play back things. Like in the middle of the session, can you go back and play take five? Well, you know, we're at to play take 10 or whatever. And so if you need to play back out of your recording software, Nexus would just do that very easily for you, it's especially elegant. if you're in anything from Adobe Audition to Pro Tools to Logic, et cetera. Got it. Um, and there's certainly ways to do it outside um, and that's, you know, but this is the, the nice elegant. thing about Nexus is it does it in your workstation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so do they get it, uh, as a, is it a subscription or a one-time buy? Either. It's, either. it's two ninety five one time or 11, $12 a month. Um, yeah. All right. Great, man. Well, there you go. It did turn into an infomercial. What can I tell you? <laughs> but <laughs> cause I'm here. <laughs> cause I'm Robert's here, it. but Hey, that's, your, that's, what's cool about doing the show. Thanks Robert. And thank you source elements for your support of VOBS. Let's get on with the show with more commercials right after this. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. All John right, Bailey. Yes. <laughs> We're back. The epic voice guy. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, speaking of blowing your mind, before we started the show, George and I were watching the first pictures from the Webb Telescope, which, mm. like, if that's going to blow your mind, it's like, whoa, there's galaxies and ga there's as many galaxies as there are stars. The thing, and the thing operates at minus, I think it's minus 400 degrees Kelvin. Wait, wait, wait. How can there be no. as many galaxies as there are stars if there's stars and galaxies? <laughs> There you go. I was a talking a, in visually <laughs> within the frame. Of, <laughs> yeah, I was I trying was, to yeah. sound, sound smart, and I said minus 400 degrees Kelvin. Everybody's like, there's no such thing as negative Kelvin? Sorry. It, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, it starts at zero. <laughs> it's zero. Nothing's, Nothing's moving, moving at all. It, it, it operates at nearly zero degrees Kelvin, and uh, it... Uh, and it will look back to about 300,000 light years before, or no, years before the big, or after the Big Bang, or something like that. It's, wow. it's insane. I'm billions yeah. of years into the it's past. It's mind-blowing. But anyway, that's by the time you've heard and seen it. this, it, it's already We're all happened. dead. Yes, yeah, so we've been <laughs> gone yeah. for several billion years. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. watching on another planet. But, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can put the Pro Audio Suite and, and, and uh, VOBS on a golden record and let it float out in space until i think it's a very good idea something else yeah. more chuck intelligent than, yeah chuck no it's going to take yeah. chuck berry's out there yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right send more chuck berry but uh yeah i mean the thing is is we could send that out there it'll take ten thousand years for a response and then you know what's the response and, and, and then the last what, what question was that? 
What yeah. did you yeah. say that again? <laughs> no, no. They'll ask a question like, you know, how do I get rid of the boomy sound in my booth? <laughs> and and I, I, I really need advice. And and also, do you do a house call? I'm over here on Jupiter Nine. That's right. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, this is a very special session of VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk because we got some super duper techies with us. We have Robert Marshall and Robble Robertson and Andrew Peters from George's other podcast, the Pro Audio Suite. Now, here's and, something really techy. Sorry, please to interrupt, Dan. Go for um, it. And it's got nothing to do with this at all, really. Only to the point that um, God, we really are. On Robert, the back in two, <laughs> I know it's getting weird now. <laughs> back in two thousand, I think two thousand and six, you were working on. Source Connect. Is that correct? Source Elements, Robert? Yeah. So it's, I mean, Source Connect was an idea in my head for pretty much as many years as I was introduced to the internet and I began working with ISDN. So somehow the idea began forming somewhere between 1998. And um, by the time 2004 rolls around, I've become annoying enough to my boss <laughs> that I, um, you know, like one of the things he said to me was like, you know, like, we'll prove you can stream audio over the internet or something. And I ended up streaming from the California office to the Chicago office of the California office. I had a huge amount of latency, but I was able to get audio across intact. And so that was one proof. And then we talked to various, um, you know, different people who were, at companies that had made products or software people. And it was always like, yeah, we could build Source Connect for you. That'll be, you know, a million dollars or more. And um, mm. it was always some crazy high price to develop it. And this is right around the same time, like Skype is just starting at the same time as well. So I think you're before Skype, because the only reason I'm saying this is because at the same time you were streaming audio, I was working on a, a company, the all fated real time casting, but the first iteration of real-time casting was actually on-camera casting. And the idea was that instead of going in in front of a camera, someone films you on a um, VHS, they send it an overnight bag to the client. The client watches the, you know, the mm -hmm. castings or auditions, calls it, then people have to come back. It takes like weeks by the time they actually get someone. Um, I said to a techie mate of mine, "Is that there's got to be some way of actually streaming the, the, uh, the video. And we did in 2006. I can still remember sitting in a house. We had a computer in one room, a computer in another room, and we streamed from uh, pre-Skype, streamed video from one room to another, which was um, pretty Ooh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so we were both doing similar things at the same time, which is yeah, kind of spooky. I remember the first version of Source Connect that we got back, and it was, it was just a line command application, right? You'd have to like type commands into a terminal to make it do stuff. And... Um, even more than the latency I had in my initial tests and we stream from one side to the other and it takes it takes like 45 seconds for the audio to get yeah. through and I'm thinking to myself like whose memory is storing it actually like how, how could it take that long and and eventually obviously <laughs> the latency got driven down um so from 2004 to 2005 roughly we did the R&D and made source connect version 1 and then it was just a trip from there. Um, we, uh, you know, just f first couple of years were super slow. It was always like, this sucks compared to ISDN. It was probably made a little bit before the internet really was able to handle this. I would type. say it was around Source Connect 3 where it really came into its own. Yeah. And that's when yeah. we built the VO to go kits for Steve, Steve. Nafshin. Yeah. Which he ran, a which was still bridging of, to ISDN because ISDN right. was still like heavily in. Out of mm. here was yeah. his business, and he was a, a a specifically built bridge to connect ISDN to Source Connect and 3.0 was I think it might we might have started before three, but I feel like three three, three had a lot. I mean, so basically, three was the first version that had auto restore and auto replace in it as well. And that was sort of our response to like, you know what, you just can't rely on the internet. And that's kind of true to this day. Still it's gotten is. better, but you really don't know when you're going to get like, you know, go walk in a park and see if you get some bird shit on you. And you probably will at some point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> numbers game. Exactly. It's going to yeah, happen. Game. Like yeah. <laughs> eventually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that was, but, and then I'm trying to think when it was, um, it was like growing steadily up until, um, I, I, I left 
I left the post house that we started out of, and um, around the same time, um, Rebecca had had acquired the company, and and that was also really motivating because there was just um, it was like sort of a rebirth, sort of. And actually, it's funny because if you remember, our website was Phoenix at that point, and we finally oh, yeah. just just bridged a, pr- a past Phoenix um, uh-huh. and the new website that just launched. Um, but yeah, we and then right around that time when Rebecca um, sort of picked it up, on and and was was like the principal at that point. Um, that's when Source Connect now came out, um, and we also shortly after that finished Source Live, which was again I think another one of those things that was just a little bit ahead of its time because we were trying to stream video to the clients in real time. But you really couldn't stream reliable, good video, 30 frames a second, that was smooth so that clients could, you know, make sound design and lip sync comments off of it. So that Source Live, the initial version, had, you know, like a three-second latency if it was running well. And if it was not running well, it was a 10-second latency. Mm-hmm. And so it, it was kind of like a great idea, but the latency made sessions rough. Um, and it was only for the people that absolutely had to be remote on their sessions. But then whatever that was, 2012 or 13, I think, when Source Live comes out. 2020, we do Source Live 2, knock the latency down to basically the same as Source Connect, like 200 milliseconds, 300. And, um, and now, as we know, it's like the whole world is remote. And, and we just the sort of... The whole world is remote. Yeah. The rest is history. And, and we're, just, we're learning these yeah. lessons early on and, and trying to position the product when no one knew that they completely needed it and then covid just kind of just yes. accelerated yeah. and then, and then yeah. you didn't sleep for two years so let me yeah, think. that's right. true it really is true Who i mean it's like, exactly started covid anyway um we did <laughs> yes. 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 in china i don't think so yeah. no we think uh robert source elements. More, uh, yeah. yeah but it's we funny because back questions. in um, yeah back in 2008 <laughs> i remember i don't know that's how true. i stumbled across source connect but i think it was 2007 2008 it's and, pretty early uh, on. I mean, we were only a few years old. Yeah, and I, yeah. I was going for a session in a studio, and the guy who owned the studio I was doing the session in was a real techie dude, Mike Slater. And, mm. um, and I walked in, and I said, I've just discovered this thing, and it's called Source Connect. And he was on his laptop. He leaned aside, and I looked at his screen, and he was looking at Source Connect. <laughs> and uh, he said, I'm just looking at it now. I went, wow, that's incredible. I only saw it yesterday. He said, well... If you buy it, I'll buy it, and then we can test it. I went, okay, we let's do it. So we did. <laughs> yeah. So we uh, we both bought it, and we just started testing to see, you know, if this thing was going to work. And um, I, the first session I ever did on Source Connect was with Mike. Unfortunately, the mm-hmm. client I was doing the session with didn't like the fact I wasn't in there and never booked me again. Boo. Anyway. <laughs> well, Happy to lose you a gig there. That went well. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get to our questions. We do have a few that have come in, believe yeah. it or not, from the guests. And some of them involve you guys specifically, meaning Robert, Andrew, and Robbo. The oh. first one is from Richard Green. Uh, he's one of our team members of George the Tech as well. And he says, I have a question for each of you guys. What's on the wall in front of you? So in other words, yeah. the thing that none of us can see, we want to know what's on the other, other side, side of the camera. <laughs> so what is each of you, besides the computer what monitor, at? what's, what's yeah. on the other um, side of you? Let's okay, see, well, could, well, I well. Dream, could I join another StreamYard link really quick with, <laughs> oh, with no. my phone? I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah, mute the wonder. audio. Yeah, you can try. Yeah, here, I'll let, let, let me I'll find your link here. Robo mistakenly moved his camera and froze. Sorry, Robo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's why I'm not touching mine. It'd be dead. <laughs> here we go. Uh, here we go. Let me have a look, see if I can do the same Dan, thing. I'm doing this to make your life hell. I'm not doing anything. I'm just... No, Dan, no, I just sitting here. It's, Sue's, it's, Sue's Sue is going crazy now. Allow She's Mike like, and what? camera. No. Allow. Don't allow Mike. <laughs> but no, I have to mute just the, the camera. Mic. Yeah. Can I do... And you have to turn your speaker all the way down on your phone or it will start to echo back quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's saying allow... So much for getting any more calls today, but, you know... (laughs) All right, so if I... um... (laughs) Well, (laughs) while they're doing that, I'm going to go to the next question real quick because I think it's something I can can answer. Oh, you you can't see, can you? Am I I in? Oh, yeah. You are. Robert's in. Robert's the first one in with the uh, iPhone view. Basically, here is the cave... Which is, here you go, here. Oh, you're in the cave. Okay, yeah. The yeah, cave. I'm looking at myself. How do I sit? I don't know. Just flip the phone. I yeah. couldn't tell you. Mm, Just turn it around. Better. All right. 
You can tell who the techie people are, can't you? There we go. Oh, my God. Yeah, now that's a studio. Catch bays. More gear. Very tasty compressor. Um, Neve. Okay. Amic. Old mixer. Uh, And then, here, I'll take my headphones off. So you want, I want to hear you for a second. Um, Hey, Robert, your flies are undone. (laughs) (laughs) Can you hear me, Robert? Nope. I'm going to turn on on his mic so we can hear him. Yeah. Oh, he can't. He's on mute. Uh, Robert, you know, you, you know, you're not on mic, right? Bathroom, kitchen, road. Nice studio. That's a full-on studio there. Yeah, Holy cow, really. that's a full-on studio. Amplifiers. Yes. And by the yeah. way, you don't need all that stuff to do voiceover in your closet. Nope. Yeah. Um, just, has mine gone through? I can see I'm probably... I don't yes, know. it has. It has. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it has to. Okay, so if I... Oh, there it is. Um, so behind my computer, which you're seeing there, is um, some outboard gear, which I think everyone loves. There's um, LA610, nice, Grace Design, Neve 1073, and 2254. A set of VU meters, which are c- completely and utterly redundant, but I actually like playing with silly shit like that. Um, <laughs> uh, MSP10 Yamahas, which are really good. Well, the right yeah. one is. The left King. one's blown up woofer. Uh, Genelec, crappy speaker. Uh, and, oh, hang on, I'm running out of cord. Um, let me unplug Another crappy speaker. And another, what do we got there? Another Gen Lake. That's the one that blew, unfortunately, uh, blew the woofer. Uh, then I have behind there, I'm going to have to come off cans as well myself. Hang on a tick. So, and in there is What is that, a Gretsch guitar? Oh, yep. And paper towel. Gotta have that. Is that is that a is that a Gretsch guitar? What you got there? It is a Hagstrom. 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 Ah. Yeah. There you go, Richard. Hopefully, we get Robo Robo back. We we lost Robo for a minute. Actually, looks like he might be back. Yeah, I think he. uh, He's down at the bottom of my screen. I leave. Do I press? I did press leave. I will press leave. Yeah, no, still we here. still got oh, you. Yes, we yeah. still got you. Okay. All right. Moving on until we get Robbo. Maybe we can get him later. Yeah. Um, Jeff, there you go, Richard. <laughs> that was more than you thought, yeah. right? Um, yeah. More Jeff than we Holman thought. Says uh, I haven't been able to sync my iPhone to my MacBook M1 for most of the year because I'm on the latest iPhone, but it won't sync with Big Sur. This is the Apple, <sighs> the Apple upgrade spiral. I call it. Um, so it says I need to upgrade to Monterey to sync. Is it Monterey fully baked now to work with Source Connect, Isotope RX, Twisted Wave, etc.? Isn't there some part of Source Connect that doesn't work with yeah, Monterey? Yeah, the, the, the remote transport sync feature doesn't work. That's never going to work because rewire isn't supported past whatever it is. So there's, um, a, there's a behind-the-scene thing called rewire that is baked into your software it's, that we don't see yeah it's a common protocol that other workstations use and we use it to synchronize two workstations so if you're reading to picture or doing that type of stuff that's what uh, remote transport sync uses and it or mm-hmm. that that that's remote transport sync uses the rewire protocol gotcha. um and the company that made rewire decided not to continue with it after like 15 years no one was relying on it so we just cut it off yeah, uh, um, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. and right. And so the the other thing is that I'm not sure, but at least early on, um, the link plugin stopped working, and also the uh, queue manager stopped working. Some of that might have come back because it's a really strange thing. Apple comes out with 12.0, completely breaks Source Connect. It was a very bad two weeks. Then, because people just upgraded without you know thinking they just clicked on the button or and then they had a us. session the next day and listening to me yeah freaking out so then um 12.1 12.2 12.3 all don't work and we ended up in that run between 12.0 and 12.3 making source connect 3.9.2 which we were never supposed to make another 3.9 version <laughs> but we had to like basically like unearth it and um and then 
12.4 comes out and Source Connect 3.9.1 starts working again with 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 Mac OS Monterey and we're like, "Oh, so you didn't do anything, Apple?" Like, mm. they they did. <laughs> <laughs> and it fixed itself by some miracle with 12.4. So there's a weird thing where if you're running Mac 12.1 0, 1, 2, or 3, then you want to use Source Connect 3.9.2, or your better bet is just to upgrade all the way to 12.4. I'm not sure exactly what is and is not working in 12.4, but I think that it's it's possible that most of it is working again, except remote transport sync. But worst case scenario, the only thing that works is your audio connection and source stream, but the auto restore doesn't replace, and replace doesn't work, and the... um, RTS doesn't work. My advice would be don't upgrade, but then I don't know what to tell you about your cell phone. And that's, yeah. Hmm. I haven't synced my iPhone to a Mac in a long time. I, I don't sync mine to a Mac. I don't I just, either. I yeah. do iCloud everything. And I, I just, I, I, I just, it's, I never have to sync it. It's, you know, yeah. I, I don't ex- except that anymore. I can't find my, my notes sometimes. I'm like, oh, I've got to. Because that's what you always bugged me about. There, there, there's all kinds of services that save your your um, like, you know, all your photos, your emails saved in the server. Like, there really isn't anything to sync. You, all all yeah. your online accounts keep yeah. all your data. You get a new phone, you just log into all your accounts, and right. the the one thing is the photos. If if you don't have a good photos um, like third party storage for your photos, but yeah. yeah. I do rely on the cloud a lot. I realize some people don't like using the cloud, and I get that. They don't want the expense. They don't like the security, privacy, whatever uh, concerns. So that could be an issue for some. But you can also airdrop everything right mm-hmm. from yep. your phone to your laptop. Absolutely. And that works right over versions of OS. So you can be on whatever the bleeding edge iPhone OS is that they force you to use. And you can be three versions back on Mac OS, and you can airdrop to that. You, you can probably just plug your phone in on USB and it'll still it'll still let you mount it and peruse it like a photo drive. Like even if you're not mm-hmm. syncing it to iTunes. Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. iPhones it. are I mean, every time that. I plug my phone in just to charge, my computer's like, do you trust this device? And you're like, sure, I trust it. And that's like, here's your photos on your iPhone and you just see all your photos right away. Maybe that's yeah. the part that's broken now. Could yeah. be, yeah. We got yeah. one question left here. Let's see if we can blow through this one. From Riley, who's watching on YouTube. When recording, it sounds to me I'm speaking at normal level, but playback sounds more like loud whispering. Advice? Hmm. Sounds to me loud like... Loud uh, whispering. Loud whispering. Loud. So it sounds like this. Yeah, I think he's talking down. to the wrong side of the mic. Yeah. I was uh, say, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure talking to the mm. wrong side of the mic. Yeah. It says, or, or possibly just in my head that I'm speaking louder since I'm in a, in, in a small, quiet space. Yeah, maybe. Plus, recently, I've been recording more in the in the late night hours due to the people above me teaching elephants to break dance during the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> oh, just mean, awesome. really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if if you're if you're recording and you you seem to be speaking at a normal level, but it sounds like well, you're that, it's, then that's maybe what's going on. Or yeah, you're recording on the microphone on your laptop. Yep. I, I still don't know what playback sounds more like loud whispering. I don't really, I can't interpret that. Is it, is it just a mic character. position thing? Is it like you're oh, so close so. to the microphone, but you're yeah. not monitoring yourself. So you're, you're yeah. standing there not listening, you know, listening to yourself through the air and you're so close to the microphone that it's like hearing yeah. what is yeah. being yeah. described as loud I'm whispering. Louder since I'm in yeah. a quiet yeah. small space. All right. All right. Well, whatever. That, 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 I think we'd have to see <laughs> and That's a great oh, answer. A, 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 yeah. a sample yeah. would could, be could, helpful. Yeah, Dan, you could send over a cup to load that um, audio into. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, give it a listen and then we can define. A yeah, you have, to like, you have to like taste a, it and swish it around a little bit <laughs> yeah, yeah, because i think of loud whisper <laughs> like high tones like this. there this oh. is a loud whisper all right well we're gonna bring this chaos to a a uh, to a to an end with a whimper instead of a bang as T.S. Eliot <laughs> once wrote uh and we'd like to thank our guests on tech talk this week uh robo robertson andrew peters and robert marshall from uh the Pro Audio Suite, and uh, we'll wrap it all up, and then George and I can go on with the rest of our lives right after this. <laughs> Don't know you can't. <laughs> no, back. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. 
Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, VoiceActorWebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact VoiceActorWebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV Well, another hour has rolled by, and uh, we'd like to thank our friends from the Pro Audio Suite uh, for joining us uh, for the last two weeks, uh, talking about stuff that could either go over your head, although I understood it all. Maybe people are a little bit more in tune with some of the higher end stuff that we talked <laughs> Hopefully about. Hopefully if they tune in tonight, they were ex ex into what these guys are into, which is talking tech about voiceover, studio recording, engineering, acoustics, and all that fun stuff that we all deal with all the time. That's right. Um, next week on this show, hopefully we will be back in the studio unless everybody's got COVID, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. I, what I'm got... hearing about possible <laughs> mask mandates again, coming up soon. Yeah, well, we'll have to do the show with masks. Uh, anyway, uh, who are our donors of the week? We can start with Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Tom Pinto. Shelly Avellino. Patty Gibbons. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. And Martha Yes You Can. Uh, look, uh, we can, you can hire us to do stuff for your home studio. I mean, if you don't understand something, if you really want to help with setup, you can hire us. And we both have different websites. I'm at homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, check out what I've got there. George is over at georgethe.tech. And I'm offering that coupon code VOBSFAN2022 for any scheduled sessions such as one-on-ones and webinars heck i'm gonna use that coupon oh wait a second <laughs> you don't need to <laughs> i don't need to i know all this stuff uh we need to thank our sponsors of course harlan hogan's voiceover essentials voiceover extra i'm glad you remembered that source elements <laughs> voheroes.com <laughs> voiceactorwebsites.com jmc demos and our new sponsor worldvoices.org the industry association of freelance voice talent join because i told you to and you trust me i think uh also uh thank you to jeff holman doing a great job in the chat room tonight getting all those questions into us and our guests sumerlino thank you so much for getting it done tonight and pushing all those buttons in the right place most of the time and of course lee penny just for being lee penny well that's going to do it for us this week you know, whatever you try to do in voiceover, it's about performance and it's about, you know, getting everything lined up with your business. 
But if it comes down to sound, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Talk. We'll see you next week.